uh, being a, uh, that owner of guy that owns their truck fully. And I feel like that's how, that's what's been um, misconception around, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I feel like that's, that's what I feel like, you know, people like you, you, you go out there, you call different companies. I, I watch you a lot and then I realized you, uh, that the content that other people was making, it wasn't similar to what I was going through and what I was experiencing. And I realized it was kind of like, okay, I can't relate to this. And I try to watch another guy and I can't relate to this. But you, it's kind of like all the questions you'll ask before calling the company and stuff like that. And I feel like, you know, you, you the perfect one that, you know, that gets a grasp of what trucking is. I appreciate when you that. Me, when you asked me about if the company considers you a family, I was like, do you consider them your family? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, every, every company that, or every recruiter uses that as a crutch. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, they always say, retreat you like family. Right. But then when you get with that company, you learn real quick that that family aspect of it is thrown out the window. Right. You know, because they got the internals, you know, they change all the time. Then, you know, you get a new, you get a new fleet manager, dispatcher, or whatever, and they don't know your name. They right. only know you by your truck number. Right. So when you call in and say, hey, you know, I'm such and such and such. A... All right, well, what's your truck number? <laughs> uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, 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 okay, yeah, this, that, and the third. Right. So the, as the aspect of treating you like family is, is more, to me, is more of a- um, Facade. A fa there, there you yeah. go. Yeah, it's more of a side because a family doesn't make you run like these certain amount of weeks to take, you know, this much home time. You know, that's not your family. That's a job. You know what I'm saying? For me, that's more than just a job. And I feel like, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the new guys that watch your channel, I mean, you know, they, they should tap into that because so certain questions, they can be answered and where they can, you know, get get the idea, okay, this is what I'm supposed to answer, this is what I'm supposed to get out of the company. Because some companies out here, they don't offer as much as other companies. And some companies will put you in a better financial position than other companies will, you know what I'm saying? So it's all different, or what, it's like a trade-off to where you want to go to. So for me, that's how I look at it, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not so much as, oh, this company is full of shit. It's more like, what can you do? Take care of home because that's all we're out here for to take care of home and so when a people uh when a person goes to like uh, cr england go to prime go to that damn what, what uh whatever they go to you know they gotta answer those questions to see what's right i feel like when i went to cr england when i first started out it was a great fit got my cdl there but it wasn't paying my bills which i didn't have no bills at the time because I, I came in home so it was like you know different so when i first seen a 600 dollar check i was like oh I made money. Right, Not that's... this is the most I ever seen in one week. <laughs> now coming in from like, you know, coming in like when I came in, I, you know, I was expecting a little bit more than six hundred because when I went to school, that's what they were talking about. They were talking about how much money you can make. Yeah. You can make this buku money. You could do six figures. So automatically, when I came in, I'm thinking like, oh, okay, I'm going to get like thousand dollar checks within the first year. But then when I realized that when I did the training, you know, went out with a trainer, I was looking at 400, like Ooh. 300, $400 checks. And I'm like, <laughs> you want to make you leave, huh? Yeah, <laughs> this, I'm, I'm sitting there like, yo, this, this ain't what I was told. This, I was, I, you know, but then, you know, they was like telling you like, you know, you got to do this. You got to put in some time and yada, yada, yada. For you coming in from, uh, coming in from a homeless perspective, that first six hundred dollar check was like gold to you. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, oh, I gotta stay. So it's like I gotta stay and do this. And but obviously, it didn't work out the way it was. And I realized those checks. But I started seeing people having bigger checks. I was like, oh, so this is how much right, you can make for the truck. All right now. And so you know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's crazy out here. But the biggest thing in trucking is, you know, people get into the owner operation and at least purchase. They think. Because I, I know on YouTube they say, oh, lease purchase is, is a bad thing. You should never do it. You spend over the amount. That's every lease. That's If you go to the car dealership, you gotta, if you decide to go lease, you know, they pay for everything. And then you just drive the car to a certain mileage every single year. It's the 
it's the same thing. The difference is it's working on a bigger truck versus a smaller car. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I don't feel like the lease game is bad, but I feel like it gives you an idea of what financial you should be and what your head should be at. Because not everybody here are willing to take, are not willing to not make a paycheck. You get what I'm saying? Oh yes, I'm saying that right. <laughs> so it's like, if you actually look at it, if you're in, if, if you don't make your paycheck with, that week, are you gonna be stressed out about it? Oh yeah. I did. So for owner operator, you can't look at it as that. You gotta look at it as okay, we didn't make no paycheck this week, so we gotta make it next week, or we gotta make it the week after, or we gotta do this. It's all about the mindset, what you set up to be. And I feel like when these guys encourage, hey, you should go out to this company that give you this this truck and this interest rate, no credit down, this, that, and the other. You gotta think to yourself like, hey, if I buy this truck, where all my ducks need to be in a row? It's gotta be your head, it's gotta be your pockets, and it's gotta be your discipline. Because discipline is gonna be, like, I, I tell people all the time, bro, I got smacked right in the mouth, man. That shit didn't feel good. Like, I was at a point where I did not have no money at all because my own ignorance put me at that certain place. I, I saved up a whole bunch of money, and I was like, man, this truck can't go down. It's a good truck. It's, it's a new body style truck. And the truck went down. I had to replace knock sensors, shocks. And on top of that, it was on back order. So now, now I'm losing money. I'm losing money while I'm sitting. I'm like, oh shit, I'm losing money, and I can't, I, I can't, I can't figure out the situation. So I'm calling everybody. I'm trying to say, hey, you got money? There's like, you a truck driver? You supposed to be making money? I was like, yeah, but that's to a certain extent, though. Not always. Yeah, the case. yeah, it's a certain, it's a, it's to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying. Like people don't understand that. It's, and they, they don't get the grabs of that. They just figure like, oh, he got the tire to the truck is he don't have to worry about maintenance. No, you still gotta worry about maintenance. Because my truck, even though it's a new truck, my shit broke down twice. The actually, crazy thing is what happened to me, right? You ain't gonna believe this. I got it out the shop, eight hours later, I bust two tires on the road. Mm. After literally getting out of the shop. So I had so a- So that's about another grand or so? For yeah, it was about right around there. Yeah, so it was like, I spent 5,000 at the shop. Then I got to turn around and spend another 1,600. For the tires, man, I was, I was heated. <laughs> I was heated, boy. Boy, I was like, I told my girl, I'm like, we going through some hard times up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever I did to piss off, man, they ain't playing with me. And then on top of that, two weeks later, I had to put it in the shop again. I had to check in the light and everything. And so I put it in the shop. Thank God, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, the company that came through, they they fixed everything. They 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 fixed it. The previous, they put it in the shop. Everything I wanted to be fixed, they fixed it. But they was very strict on getting their money back. They, they was not too per se on the truck payments because they could push those back, but it was per se on the repairs of the truck. They wanted it in five weeks instead of eight weeks. You know, average of eight weeks, you pay like $700 back to them. So, you know what I'm saying? On top of the so it'd be around 1800 And so we couldn't come to agreement on that. So, you know what I'm saying? I had to call people. I was like, yo, if, if I don't have this situation fixed, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have to, you know, basically, forfeit everything I have, like the house, the car, everything, just to get the title to this to this truck. You know what I'm saying? Because the simple fact is, whatever happened last year affected me now, you know what I'm saying? And so that's why I was like telling you, like in six months I haven't made no money. This year I'm finally getting out of that because I asked my dad for like, like buku money. I didn't even think he'd give it to me, man. <laughs> All right. I was more like a beggar. All right, that's what's up, man. Well, I appreciate the time that you give me, man. All right, then. And uh, like I said, just, uh, well, you're already checking me out. So yeah. just be on the lookout for the uh, for the post up. All right, then. All right. Hey, I appreciate you. Are you on your way? Are you coming soon to me?